With me in the automotive lab here at Delta College is Mike Finelli, the division chair for the uh, trades. Technical trades and manufacturing division. Technical trades and manufacturing division. Exactly what does that encompass, your division? Um, our division is really made up of all of the, those occupational programs, the real hands-on programs. So we're talking about things from automotive to welding, architecture to wind energy. Um, mm. and all kinds of things in between construction, um, CAD, CNC machining. So a lot of those really um, apprentice-like programs that uh, we offer here at the college. Okay, now you used two terms our audience may not be familiar with. Sure. Uh, CNC and CAD? Yeah, computer-aided drafting. Okay. Um, so students in that program will learn how to use different software packages to produce drawings and 3D models oh, of different wow. parts. And then um, in the CNC or com computer numeric controlled program, they're working on CNC machines, okay. machines that are controlled by computers and uh, numeric language to produce parts. So okay. that so students will actually in that program they'll be in CAD classes where they'll learn how to design the part and then they'll actually go into the lab and actually produce the part on a CNC machine. Okay. What is your enrollment for, say, the past year? For the, for the past year, uh, we, in, in the whole division? Whole division. It, that we, we, uh, it's going to be somewhere around about 18,000, I think, uh, credit hours. Um, I'm not really sure on student numbers. I'd have to do a count. But we typically look at things by separate programs and then the number of credit hour production that we do. Okay. so you. You, you're having difficulty telling me exactly how many human beings are. Yeah, are, 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 yeah. It's 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 sorry. also difficult because so many of our students, you know, we'll have both full-time students that are you know normal traditional students, and then a lot of part-time students. Um, a lot of okay. students in our area, they come to the college looking for training in a, in maybe one or two classes, and that's all that they're really after. They want to advance themselves in their current job. And, and okay. they want to, you know, move up to that next position. So they often won't even uh, say that they're in a particular program. So it's hard for us to track them. We just know that our credit hour production goes up and down and fluctuates with that. So the students that we know are in given programs, we can generate those kind of reports. But okay. um, you know, we we have to consider it a successful um, venture for us if a student says, "I just need to come out and I need to take this one extra class in automotive so that I can." keep my job if maybe they're saying now you have to be trained in how to work on electric vehicles or hybrid vehicles. Okay. I mean we consider that to be a success for us if, if that's if that student gains employment or keeps their employment. Okay. Are there uh, in particular the full time students, are there prerequisites you have to take before you can get into the classes within this division? Well we try we try not to have a lot of barriers for the students to get into the hands on program because um, we understand that a lot of students come to us with um, some fear that they're, that they're not going to be successful. Maybe they didn't have a great experience in high school. Maybe they don't feel like their math and English skills are as strong as they should be. Mm -hmm. um, but we do make sure that there are some basic requirements. And a lot of times it's a math entry level and English entry level. So they'll take their compass scores. And as long as that, they, that we feel that they can be successful by the, so that they can read the textbooks and they can do those sorts of activities, then we'll, we'll let them in the program. And then the program has um, math required in it that will allow the student to work their way up through the program. But we're, we're kind of, what we found is that if you, if you get the people in and they realize that, man, I, I really enjoy construction. And when I'm working on construction, I can do the math. I, all of a sudden, you know, they're interested, so they say, I, I want to know what the angle of this roof is, and they can do trigonometry all of a sudden. They've never been able to do it their whole life. Mm -hmm. So we try, to, we try to make sure that they're going to be successful, they'll have those basic skills they need, but we don't want to put a lot of barriers in. And then as they move up into tougher classes, then they're going to be prerequisites that would help control them through that path. If I'm in the construction class, for example, mm -hmm. and it's clear that I don't have the math background, that I need to be successful. What would you do with me? Well, there's a few things we do. One of the one of the things that we typically do in like let's say our framing square class where it's basically all construction math. Mm. One of the first things I always do when I teach a class and it's pretty accepted in, in our division is that I give a, a pretest. And it'll start oh, out okay. at basic math skills and it'll work them all the way up to, you know, where they're doing algebra. And okay. then you know, I'll actually look at that test and say, "Okay, where are my students at?" 
And if I have some students that are, you know, really struggling with ba basic math skills, they're having trouble with fractions and those sorts of things, then we'll either, if, if, it's, if it's a big enough problem with the whole group, we'll slow the whole group down, we'll back up, and we'll work on those math skills to get them to where we need to be. If it's an isolated problem, we'll send them down to the uh, LLIC where they can work with a math tutor to help them, you know, with ba basic math. So, you know, dealing with fractions, which obviously in construction, it's all about fractions. Right. <laughs> Uh, the diversity of the uh, students who are in your division, I mean, is it, is it a good mix of female students, uh, minorities? Uh, uh, I've heard in the past that when you get into the technical trades, it's one kind of student. Well, uh, you know, I think, I think there is some of that. I, you know, we get a lot of students that come to us interested in the trades, and they seem to come from a background where they're getting exposed to those sorts of things. So there is some of that. Um, I, I do know that we, we have a lot of efforts in all of our areas to make sure that when we go out to the skill centers and we go out to the high school, mm -hmm. that, we're, that we're, you know, showing this to all of the student body. Um, we make efforts to make sure that a lot of our marketing shows females and minorities in the pictures because you know sometimes just seeing that maybe it opens it up to the, the thought that hey I, I could get into this field and we and we we try as much as we can to work with students because one of the things that we find is that sometimes it's almost like speaking a different language a student comes into a tech class and if they've never seen it before they you know I'm saying terms like CNC and CAD and fascia and soffit and they're hearing Another light might as well be French, right? Right. And so right. what we have, what we have to do a, jo a better job of is making sure that in those fundamental classes that we're bringing students up to that speed. So we do a lot in, you know, like say in a in a building materials class, our 101, first class you're going to take, of just starting from the very basics of this is what the building materials are, this is the terminology we we use, so that we don't lose people because sometimes we just talk the way we talk because we've been doing it for. 40 years, right? Okay. So, so I, I think we really make an effort, and we we always have representation down here from the different minor un, underrepresented groups. Mm -hmm. But I think we could do a better job, and uh, and uh, and mm -hmm. it has to be on the outreach side. You know, I really I really believe that. I mean, we have to do a better job of getting out there and having those conversations with with um, some of the other school districts to say how can we do a better job to get your students to come out here. And we've made some of those efforts already this year. We were out at Arthur Hill at one of their career days and, and talked with a lot of students out there. So we're, you know, you know, we're open to that. We think that's something that we do have to do a better job of. If a parent wanted to expose their children, elementary age, middle school, to technical trades or manufacturing, what would you recommend that they do? Well, one of the great opportunities is the summer camps that we have here at Delta College. Oh, there are summer camps yes, involving. We do. We have actually. I'm have glad a, you mentioned that. <laughs> yeah, we have a construction camp that goes on where they actually, um, and it's 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 called a construction camp, but they're actually going to get exposed to more than just construction. They're going to move around to welding and and to different areas, oh, so that great. they're going to get to see the machine tool area, automotive area. So they get a, a pretty good exposure to the kinds of things, and that's a great opportunity. If you get someone in here in that middle school range and and you start to plant that seed that this is something that you might like to do. We did an alternative energy component to our camp last year, and we had middle-aged kids, and they just loved it. We, we built solar cars and, and wind turbines, and uh, they just they just loved that opportunity to get in the lab and build something hands-on. Great. Mike Finelli, I want to thank you for allowing us to come into the auto lab here at Delta College and uh, sharing some time with us. And if you want to see Mike, come on out to one of the summer camps this summer and uh, I'm sure you'll be ready to help you out. Thanks for coming in, Mike. All right, thank you.